What is up, you guys? Uh, Dylan here. Um, this is going to be part three of the Power DNS series and videos uh, of uh, tutorials. So uh, let's get started. We were um, pending, you could say, on the um, checking out the front end for Power DNS, which is Power DNS Admin, and seeing how it works uh, and the capabilities and functionalities that it can offer us. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to show you is how to do the basic stuff like adding um, a, a zone. Uh, if you didn't watch the previous episode, it's really, really simple. I'm going to go ahead and delete this zone right here, test.com, and recreate it so that you can uh, check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. There we go, zone deleted. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, go here, new domain, test.com, and then I'm going to do um, native for the type, since we only have one DNS server, and then uh, start of authority, edit API, I'm going to leave it on default. You can set it to epoch or increase, whatever you like, and uh, feels more um, uh, more suited to your needs uh, but it's a really basic basic setting and it's not really that important um, so once we have created the zone you've got a few um, a few things you can do here you've got um, you can change the admin settings of the domain you can manage it for example so if we go here the admin settings uh, you can change the ACL basically the access control to that domain so if you want to register users that uh, can manage that domain without being administrators you can do it, um, and you can add, for example, automatic uh, reverse pointer creation, and uh, it has also compatibility with DIN DNS. Now, um, if we go back here to the domain, uh, you're going to see, obviously, that when you create a zone, it has no uh, records in it. So if you wanted to create a... Um, record for your root zone, what you would have to do is put in the name at, which is the identifier for the root zone, and then you're going to put the record type, uh, of course, that you want, and the status is going to be active, and generally, if it's a record that is uh, being tested, then you can leave it at one minute, but then you want to switch it to probably 60 minutes or 24 hours. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put the data that you want in this case. So it's going to be an IP. So let's put the, for example, the, the um, DNS IP. So we're going to do that there. And then you can hit apply changes. And there you're going to have a root um, A record for your zone. Um, so if we go here to our WSL and we do uh, dig... Uh, test.com at 10 10 10 24 you're going to see that it responds with this now uh, you can add a bunch of other types of records you can also add for example txt records if you need um, uh, spf records uh, so for example let's go ahead and test a, um, a txt record or actually let's test an, an spf Interesting. So this is something new that was not available before, uh, the SPF type. Usually you would add the SPF as a TXT, but uh, let's try, for example, an SPF. So V, SPF1, MXA, uh, IP4, let's say 10, 10, 10, 24, uh, and all, for example. And then if you hit save, you're going to get this um, SPF right there, and you hit apply changes. And so if we go here and dig um, uh, test.com txt at 10, 10, 10, 24, you're going to see that you get the SBF that you just added. So this is really, really straightforward. If you want to add, for example, for a subdomain, let's say sub.test.com, you can just go ahead and do uh, this, for example. And if we do a dig of sub.test.com you're going to get that IP that you just put in. So it's super straightforward if you've used any other DNS uh, server services uh, it's it's super straightforward very simple to use 
uh, and you can add stuff really quickly. Uh, you also have a change log, so as you can see, uh, you can check you can check what has been added, what has been deleted, which is uh, super useful if you have a lot of users in your domain name server. Um, you can also, of course, enable DNSSEC here, but it depends on uh, what kind of uh, domain you have. Usually, it only works with .com or .net domains. I don't. I don't think it. I, I think it depends on the provider really, on which ones it works. Um, and you also can clone your domain to a template. So that is also that. You also have your reverse zones right here and your IP6 uh, zones right here. Uh, also, if you want to check your PowerDNS um, settings and info, you can go here to your PowerDNS Power uh, section and you can check uh, the IO weight, the, the, the cache inserts, etc. You also have uh, all the settings from the PowerDNS config file. So if you wanted to check that, you can go here and you'll be able to see all the settings on the server. You are not, however, able to uh, change any of these settings. What is cool, though, is that if you click on a setting, it will take you to the documentation site for um, uh, for PowerDNS. Now, you've got all these settings here, but they're mostly default, so I'm not going to bother checking them. Um, you can also go here to global search, and you can search for... Um, any strings that you might want to, any strings or IPs that you might want to search for. Uh, you've got the history, uh, which is very similar, but for you can filter by activity, by account, uh, and by user authentication, which is uh, pretty useful. And then you've got the domain temp templates, which is pretty much the same as a standard domain, uh, but it is a template, so you can create a new zone from that template, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, then you've got accounts, so you can add users from here without them having to register if you wanted to. Um, you also have, well, of course, the user section right here where you can uh, see your, your users, change their roles, revoke privileges or give them, etc. And then you've got the API keys section where you can um, give an API key to a user with certain access control. And then you have the settings tab, which has uh, all the basic um, power DNS admin settings right here. So you can change, for example, auto pointer. Uh, you can set it to on. You can add some custom CSS in case you wanted to, I don't know, change colors, for example, or things like that. You can enable uh, avatars with Gravatar enabled. Um, you can set, for example, um, your system to your PowerDNS uh, server to log you in to LDAP authentication first and then onto the local database if that is not available. Uh, it's usually turned on by default. Uh, you can set it to maintenance mode. Um, you can uh, force um, TOTP for uh, two-factor authentication, for example. Uh, you can change the timeout settings, etc. So it's uh, really, really versatile. It has a, quite a few settings. And then you can, of course, go to your uh, PowerDNS settings, uh, change your API key, uh, your URL, and your DNS version, in this case, which is wrong from the last uh, last tutorial. I never changed it, but this is 480. Um, you can uh, also uh, go to your authentication part, and you can authenticate with a lot of different services uh, with LDAP, um, for example, if you have an Active Directory or if you have an open LDAP server, it works really well. We have a Samba LDAP, so that also works, uh, and I can tell you that by experience. Um, Google OAuth works, so that is really nice. Uh, you got GitHub, uh, Microsoft, and OpenID Connect uh, authentication systems as well. Um, and you can change whether you want uh, people to be able to self-register or not, which is also a nice um, option. Um, I think as far as, as uh, PowerDNS admin goes, I think those are mostly all the options 
uh, that I've seen that are important, uh, that are useful, um, that I can show you and explain to you that you might not. Uh, mostly the the domain root identifier uh, part uh, is the complicated part, but it's it's all pretty straightforward and simple to use. So really uh, huge kudos to the guys that did um, this uh, this application. So yeah, I hope this uh, series of tutorials and videos was useful for you. And if anyone um, out there asks for a Let's Encrypt integration uh, tutorial or LDAP integration tutorial, then I can uh, definitely do that uh, in the future. But in the meantime, this is going to be the uh, conclusion of this sort, sort of series. Or, or uh, So yeah, I hope it was useful for you and have a great day.